Hello fellow jeepers. So, if you're here actually for the video tutorial and you didn't watch my previous vlog on what I'm doing, I'm basically going to be showing you how to change the tie rods slash steering kit on a Jeep Wrangler YJ because I need to change it on mine and I've never done it before. So, good luck if I actually get it right then we'll both know how to do it. But I actually don't know how to do it and I tried to find a YouTube video explaining on how to do it and nothing was really explaining it the way I wanted it to so I'm gonna make my own video explaining how to do it and hope I do it right because if I don't I'm telling you all how to do it wrong. I'm obviously tired. I had a long day but I'm going to take it off tonight and then in the morning I'm gonna show you how to put it on. So right now we're just gonna show you how to get the tie rods off and then in the morning I will show you how to put it on and what to do after that. I, d I don't really know what I'm doing but let's we'll see if we can figure it out together. Okay, so step number one, which I've already started, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically, what you're going to take off is every single component that you need to replace. So I know if you're just replacing the tie rod end, for example, you're still going to have to take this bolt off and knock them out. So there's going to be a cotter pin in here, which is going to look like, it's going to look like this. It's just basically a pin and it's bent here and what it's designed to do is make sure that this bolt does not come loose. Take some pliers. You're just gonna kind of pry it straight the best you can. And then you pull it out. And then you have a few of those to do. So there's one here, one on the complete other side. There's one in the middle and you just need to take all those out and that'll be step one. Number two. You're gonna go to each individual one of these bolts, whatever they're called, bolt heads. <laughs> um, you're gonna take a three by four wrench. I am just gonna be using this. Um, I would not suggest using this. I would actually suggest you use uh, a hammer drill if you have it or something in that area to actually beat this out. But I'm gonna to try to use this to just do it because it's late at night and I don't wanna wake my neighbors up. I've probably disturbed them enough already. So and as always, it is very useful to use something such as PB Blast or WD-40, whatever you have to loosen up that bolt, just in case. Alright, we got it loose. Awesome. And then you're going to just do that on the rest of the bolts. Same exact step on all the rest of the bolts you have. Well, I ended up breaking my own rule. My neighbors are just going to have to deal with it because that middle bolt was a little stiff and I ended up having to use a power tool. The other boot bolts however were super loose for me personally so just know that's probably best to have a power tool on hand. Okay so the next step here is literally we're going to knock it out. All right. You just want to make sure you don't damage anything while you're beating on it with a hammer <laughs> but I think it came out pretty well more or less. I'm just gonna go loosen up those other ends and knock everything else out. So apparently I forgot to mention, so this piston looking thing here, the thing that looks just like a uh, shock, there's a shock right here actually. And at the end of the shock, I don't know if you can see the light beaming right on it, there's a bolt. We're gonna have to remove that too. I'm having trouble getting this linkage out. And I do wanna mention also on this linkage, even though I'm having trouble getting it out, when you're hammering down on this, you wanna make sure you're hitting the direct way that the bolt, is that the bolt is facing. Don't hit it from the side, you, and don't hit it necessarily directly down, but directly on the bolt would be best if you can get in there. I'm having trouble getting in there, but directly down the direction the bolt is facing downward, that way you don't bend the bolt. So try to hit that down and make sure you get this bolt out. <laughs> I've been whacking this stuff for about 30 minutes now, but I finally got it off. So I'm gonna tell you what I ended up doing. So for the one that was here attached to this linkage, it's a little harder to get off because unlike the tie rods on this side, you can't just bang down directly on it. You have to kind of hit it at an angle. So I found out the best way to hit it is just not straight down, just kind of just slightly crooked and just whack it right there. So yeah, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. And I think that's what helped me is not directly to the side, just about just off a hair and just hit it just on the side to down so you can get a little bit of hit, hit behind that and that's what got it off for me. As for the bolt that holds your 
this thing, the, the bolt that holds that, it actually has Loctite, and it's a very long bolt actually. Oop, longer than I thought. So this is the bolt, and you can see there was Loctite at the end of it, and I tried everything electrical and everything. If yours comes out easy, that's great, but what I ended up having to do is after spraying PB Blast in here, taking a breaker bar, you stick a breaker bar behind it, and you just slowly, and be very careful because I have broken head bolts off before, and that would be a nightmare. So I was very scared to do this, but you just crank very slowly, crank it out, make sure you're not breaking the head off. And then I went to this and knocked it out the rest of the way. Just slowly work its way out. Make sure you don't strain anything. Make sure you spray some kind of lubricant because breaking this off will be a nightmare for you. And after you do that, you've got this. All right, so it is the morning now. So today I'm going to actually put the new steering kit and tie rods on the Jeep and I tried to do a little research so I could try to understand what I need to be doing but like I said before um, I was having trouble finding a video in which I thought was fitting to understand exactly what I need to do so I didn't really learn anything um, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it it's right here this is the Crown Automotive steering kit replacement it comes around to about $200 and it's supposed to replace the stock steering kit it comes with everything you need I'm assuming I kept all my bolts and such because for example I don't know if this bolt will be replaced until I find out what we don't need I'm keeping everything together but right now if you are replacing just the tie rod ends you're going to have to count your rotations which apparently means basically every full crank out is going to be one rotation so one full rotation count how many rotations it takes to exit and put those exact same rotations in everybody does all this fancy measuring and stuff but i think i'm just going to kind of wing it and hope for the best mental melt apparently this way goes counterclockwise to twist it in not clockwise i just took it out Oops. so i'm sure there's a lot better way to do this and it's possible i will run into a problem down the road <clears throat> or very soon but what I did is, first of all, I tightened them in and I eyed it and just made sure it was pretty close enough. This side, I pretty much got spot on. This one, I had to loosen out a little bit. But then I counted the threads. This has eight threads out. And now this has eight threads out. This has about nine threads out. And now this has nine threads out. So it looks about right to me. Lining it up looks about parallel. So I'm going to say that's good. After that, what you want to do is these clamps are going to hold these in. So you're going to want to torque these down both sides. I think that looks pretty good for that. The next step is going to be you're going to do the exact same thing on the main bar. I'm going to just guesstimate it. It'll be easier probably for this. I'm just going to tighten it in as much as I can, count the threads, make sure it looks all even, and then clamp everything down. It's actually going to be two points of adjustment on this end. You have this middle bracket, which will be attached to your main piece here, and then you're going to have this piece here so you're going to have to actually tighten this main bracket into this place here count your threads make sure it's long enough if you want to do proper measurements you can I'm not going to and we're gonna see how well that works out for me I'm only gonna just hand tighten this here now I think it'll be easier to do this one first and then put after tightening this down and making sure this threading is right I'm gonna put it on the main bar I think that'll be an easier way to do it also I made the mistake again it needs to be counterclockwise not clockwise. Fortunately, I am in mid crank and out of nowhere, God decided that he needed to water his land. So, in case you run into this situation, I guess just put everything inside and I'll be right back to finish what I was doing with fixing the Jeep. So I've got everything ready to be put in, at least to my knowledge. After I finish those steps, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to install this stabilizer i think it's what it's called the steering stabilizer and i found out you will need the original bolt for that so make sure you don't get rid of that you're gonna have to use it again so now that i got that and then put that on first or at least i am because it seems like it'll be easier to get to after that the next step i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put on this main crossbar i think that'll be the easiest 
It's gonna take a little bit of uh, wiggling around things, but once you finally get these aligned, and you're gonna wanna make sure you put this whole bar in at once, or at least I had to put each side in at the same time, so I kinda stuck it underneath here and twisted it to make sure both threads went through. If you do it one at a time, you won't be able to get the other side through, so I figured that out the hard way. So that should save you some time if you do that. Make sure you get it both at first, and then after that, you're just gonna wanna get your three by four wrench, and then you're just gonna wanna tighten down on this. Now, I don't know the torque measurements because once again, I do not have a torque wrench. If you want to look up the exact measurements, you might have to Google that. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to torque it down to about as tight as it can get and hope that's a good fit. So after you tighten this bar down, and I actually haven't tightened it all the way, I think we can go a little tighter. It just has too much play in it until we put everything together. Um, after you tighten that down though, you're going to want to put this crossbar in. And the way I did that was you need to make sure that you put them in the right way. It's going to look like this on this side, the nipple is going to be on top, and then on this side over here, the one that connects onto your steering bar, it's going to have the nipple directly on the bottom. So once you make sure you get that on, you're going to want to stick it through here. And then I'm using this bolt, just hand tightening it for now just to keep it supported. And then you're going to put your other bolt on this back side over here. After you get all of that hand tightened, you're just going to take your wrench and you are going to tighten it down all the way. After you tweak everything down, you're going to want to make sure that the bolt square spot here, this opening here, lines up with one of the holes because you're going to end up sticking one of these cotter pins right through. Get it through. So you stick this through, you bend your cotter pin. After, but make sure you only do this step after everything looks good. Otherwise, you're going to have to take them off, probably buy new cotter pins, and it's going to be a hassle. So I'm actually going to take this one out because I want to make sure everything looks good. And then I just repeat that step over on all the other bolts you have. Just make sure that you don't put these in until you're sure it's all looking good. You'll never believe it, guys. Did it just stop? Yeah. Oh my word, are you serious? Yeah. I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm in a bit of a hole right now because I have the last thing to put on and I have an extra part and I really don't know where it goes. Final step is to bring this over to this hole and we're gonna tighten it down with the bolt. Now I have the bolt. It's right here, this fancy thing. And I have the washers and the lockers, but I really don't know what this is. I honestly do not know where this goes and because I cannot find any instructions we might just have to leave this behind and hope that it actually is not important. It's going to assume that we're doing this right which means you're going to take this bolt here which I think is a little different from the regular one. I don't remember what the original factory one looked like but this one looks like this. You're going to take the slightly thinner side here and you're going to stick it right through here. On your piston thing. I'm gonna need two hands to do this. Okay, update. Use a little bit of WD-40 or maybe water, or whatever won't destroy the rubber. Just spray a little in there and then it'll slide right through a lot more easily. After that, you're gonna wanna pull it around here and stick it through this main hole. I'm gonna take this small bolt you have here and stick it behind here. Tighten it by hand. You do that, you're gonna wanna take your washer your locking washer and your bolt this will be a bigger bolt and you are going to want to hand tighten that down and your 3 by 4 socket here and you're going to just want to crank it down on both sides this is going to require two hands so I'll be right back I'm genuinely unsure of where this part goes I have checked everywhere and it seems to not be able to attach anywhere so I'm going to assume that we are done once you have put all your cotter pins in, you've tightened everything down and everything seems like it's working for you, the next step is put your tires back on and go get an alignment. It's definitely going to be necessary. If you are more experienced than me, which if you are, you probably don't need this video, so I'm assuming you're not, you're going to go, need to go to a professional to make sure that everything's lined up properly. There's a 99% chance that it's not. Even if you did everything right, you will need an alignment. So go to your local alignment shop, wherever you can get that done. Get an alignment, and then you should be good to go. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope this helped because 
<laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, so hopefully I was able to help some of you guys out. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my vlog look, um, on my YouTube channel if you like Jeeps. I have plenty of videos for you to enjoy just for entertainment. Have a great day. Hope it worked out.